Hello friends and welcome back. In the previous video we introduced a new series, the construction of the Kenbuck One computer, which is considered to be the first personal computer ever created. In the second video of the series we will assemble the front panel of the computer. The front panel will be required to test the PCB once we assemble it. If you're interested in following along with this build, there's still quite a bit of Kimbuck One PCBs available for sale at www.calendshot.com. Kits are also available, but only a few are left. Let's get started with the front panel. The panel is made of thin aluminum and has holes for lights and switches. As was mentioned in the previous video, we'll be using modern replacements for the lights and switches, but this panel supports both modern and original parts. This specific panel was fabricated by PCBWay. I'll include a link to the instructions on how you can get one built for yourself and uh, CAD files to be used as desired. On the instructions page, you will find an Add to Cart button next to the front panel CAD file. Select sheet metal at the top and then uh, 5052 aluminum. In our case, we only need a quantity of one. Under surface finish, We'll select brushed. The remaining fields can remain as is. As you may have noticed, my front panel is blank without any markings. A lot of folks typically tape or glue the front panel markings directly to the front panel or use vinyl lettering, which I will attempt to do in my case. Additionally, PCBWay can print the markings directly on the front panel. To do that, select silk screen on their part marking and then upload the front panel illustrator file which you can find on the instructions page. The final product will look very much like the original. Alternatively, I'll list a few blank panels without any markings or finishing on the www.calendar.com store at an affordable price of $45 if anyone is holding off on building the entire case but still requires a front panel to begin with. Let's get back to the front panel construction. We have all the components ready to go, so let's get started. By the way, the kit will include the components for the front panel along with the PCB components. Alright, we'll start with the switches. The original switches were attached from the inside, but since we're using modern MX switches, we'll insert them from the outside. They just clip in. Be sure to orient them in such a way that all the leads face in one direction. Next, we move on to the lights. The lights we're using here are modern LEDs. The original used incandescents and it's hard to find small incandescents that draw under 40 milliamp of current, which is why we're, we'll be using uh, modern replacements for the time being. The eight white LEDs go in the left eight positions for the display of address and data. The remaining yellow LEDs go in the remaining holes. Skip the smaller hole, that's for a switch. The orientation should not matter since these LEDs are non-polarized. Next we'll install the memory lock switch, the smaller one, and the power switch. Some drilling may be required to get the switches to fit. The keycaps can be installed next. The colors do not matter much, but I will use 4 black and 4 white switches for the address and data entry, and yellow red pattern for the remaining switches. The kit includes a variety to choose from. It's soldering time! We need to solder a wire between all the common wires of both the LEDs and the switches. The less wire can be longer, approximately 30 centimeters long, since it will uh, connect to the PCB.
is turning out pretty good so far. Next we'll solder the remaining lead of each individual LED and switch with the wire long enough for it to travel along the wire bus and out to the PCB connection. That's 30 centimeters past the last LED and switch. Use zip ties as you go to keep the wires organized. This is a long and tedious process so take your time and make it look pretty. We'll do the same with the switches. Solder two of the leads of the memory lock switch when you get to it. Make sure to solder the two right leads and leave the left lead open on the memory lock toggle switch. Solder the remaining MX switches in the same manner using zip ties to keep everything organized. Be sure to leave enough slack in the wire since you can always trim it if it's too long but it's much harder to extend shorter wires. Trim each wire to the same length and then strip the ends of each wire. The front panel is not ready. The next step is optional but it will improve the setup if implemented. We will install crimp pins on each wire and insert them into connectors that can later be connected to the PCB. This will make the front panel removable if desired. Use a continuity tester and the connection layout sheet included with the kit to determine where each wire goes and then insert the wires into their respective connectors. There's one 14 position connector and two 8 position connectors. Additionally, there are two common wires that use uh, one position connectors. Now that we're finished with the front panel, let's assemble the rear panel. This one's pretty straightforward. The power cord sleeve and fuse holder go on the right side of the panel. Some drilling may be required for them to fit. Next, place the power supply in the center of the rear panel and mark the locations of the bolt holes. Drill the holes for the power supply and attach the power supply using M3 bolts. It's also recommended to use multi-tooth washers to create a good connection between the rear panel and the power supply for grounding. That's it! The rear panel is ready! Thanks for watching this video! In the next video, we'll assemble the PCB, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye bye.